All right, guys, welcome to my bullion lot hunting video. And just to throw it out there, if none of you have followed some of my past lot hunting videos, I haven't made too many of them. I think I did two last summer. But anyhow, this is not a hobby. This is something I do occasionally for my business. Anyway, what we have here is a bag of 5,000 mercury dimes, which is um, $500 face value. And um, this here was a sealed bag. I just cut it open to get into them. Um, I kind of made this purchase on a whim. Um, I, w I was offered this bag um, because these mercury dimes were uh, supposedly supposed to be unsearched. Um, and only me and a, a few other select clients were offered this bag first, and, and I jumped on it. Um, so needless to say, once I pick out all the goodies out of here, I need to liquidate um, as, these as fast as possible. Um, so anyhow, I'm going to get to looking through these dimes, and let's hope there's some goodies in here. Okay, I just made a beautiful pull here. We're going to do the... Uh, the flip on this one live came out of the bag just like this. I saw the 1916. It's in at least VF condition. And, uh, you can always hope, but in this condition, if it has a D on the back, it'd be worth about four grand. Beautiful coin. So we'll go ahead and flip it over. No mint mark. Still a beautiful coin. I'll have to check the value, but in this condition, on a 16 plane, probably in the ballpark of about $15, something around in there. Happy to have that one. Let's keep going. The first decent find, and I would definitely say it's a little more than decent, it is a 1918D weak strike. Man, look at the detail on that. May look blurry to some of you and look lower grade, but it's actually nice for an early Merc. Um, I think it's die clashed too. There's definitely something going on with this one. It's a nice original coin. You can see the toning and tarnish up at the top there. Look at that. It's also a rotated die. You can see the D down there at the bottom. It's a mid-range VF coin. Beauty right there. This one would have would appraised at a probably around $30. Give or take. Could probably get $35 for it. Beauty right there. On to the next. And another stunner pops out here. 1924 plain. Nice original coin, never cleaned. You can see the little bit of tarnish around the rim. That is always a great sign. It shows that it wasn't rubbed. Because if you could, if you wanted to, you could take a Q-tip and a little bit of a cleaner solution and that would rub right off, but you don't want that on a coin like this. Might not quite be AU, but if not, it's very close. Regardless, it's going to be in the $20 range. Beautiful coin. All right, let's see what else we can pop out of here. Another couple beauties here. This one's a 1923 plane, probably an XF. Yeah, that should be an XF40. That's a beauty, a nice original beauty there too. That one's probably in the seven to ten dollar range. Such a nice coin, and um, one that's not quite as good as that one. But we got a 1927 plane in VF, and this one's probably in the five dollar range. So, um, really awesome batch of Mercs here. But I did pay quite a premium over spot to get a batch like this. So uh, 
Let's see if we can get anything else. Okay, I found a couple coins in the AU range, but man, this one's the best one yet. It's all luster on there. Wow. I'm not going to show, I'm just showing the cream of the crop. There's a lot of good coins coming out of here. I'll do a wrap up at the end, be a little bit more thorough. But yeah, this coin was never clean. All that shine on there, it's just how it came from the mint. I get a couple different angles there. Beauty. And keep on hunting. Probably almost through the first thousand here. Just scored a semi key, um, a 1931S. Probably, now. Nah. It's a little quite worn on the bands, so not sure if it quite makes the f cut for a fine 12. Maybe not. It's still a nice coin and in the $5 range. There hasn't been a lot of rare coins in this batch, but man, there are a lot of high grade examples. So if anybody ever picked through a lot of these, they definitely didn't cherry pick the XF and AU coins. Look at this one here. All original luster, a 1940D, which is the lowest mintage in the 40s. Just a stunning coin. But on the more modern ones, you get the detail like this, and you'd think, wow, this would be worth a lot, but this is probably eight bucks, you know. But, man, just a beautiful coin. I'm hoping to pull out some key dates or you know, like the early ones with the high grade like that 1918D I found that is by far the best one so far especially since the dies rotated that seemed to happen commonly on the early mercs so let's keep looking through here okay it was slow there for a little while but I got two great finds in the same handful just popped this 1927 out has a few hairline scratches but it's not bad That XFAU range has some luster on it, and uh, conservatively $10 on that one. And then I pulled this, only a few coins later. I call this the second to best find, apart from that 18D I found. This one's a 17D, and I would call it a VF20. Somewhere around in that range. And you're looking at about $25 on this one. So awesome. Going to keep going. Okay, getting close to the halfway mark here. A couple more really nice ones to show. Beautiful VF 1927S. Got a 1929D. Also in VF. And a really sharp 1929S. That one actually is closer to XF. Um, the three of those coins, just for rough, rough estimate, those are in the $10 range. Um, the 27S. It's a $30 coin in XF, so because this is a really nice example of a VF, it's probably actually closer to $20. Um, and this one's not as high on the value, but it's just a stunner. 1936 AU, all original. Toning and color, everything, never cleaned. Beautiful coin there. That one's probably seven bucks so uh, I'm gonna keep going it's turning out great so far you're not a merc what are you doing in there here's one of the most interesting coins I found so far um, I believe this one to have been in probably some sort of display or collection you can see that beautiful dark grayish gunmetal and sort of black toning to it I love the look of that and you turn it over 
and it's got old uh, hardened glue around the edges and that big chunk there on the left side so this was probably in I don't know some sort of display or used as something like that because you know there's glue on the back and the front's heavily oxidized which gave it all that really neat toning so uh, that one probably has a story to tell I'll set that one aside just just because I like it so uh, see what else we can get here gosh did I just hit a beauty here look at that 1916 man that thing's got crazy toning too it's like a tan slash yellow but uh, I'm not gonna rattle that around I'm gonna turn the camera off pick it back up and uh, flip it over oh, but man that's a beauty there stay tuned okay so there she is man that might be an AU gorgeous coin so we'll flip it over see if there's a mint mark Eighteen sixteen S got to have a little bit of a miniature heart attack there because in this condition if that was a D you're talking closer to eight grand now <laughs> so that would have been a quite the chunk of change there but uh, I'm gonna check the book value on this one 16 S in the AU range not 100% certain offhand but I think we're in the probably 25 ish dollar range probably something around in there but I will check and let you guys know man that, that is a beauty right there alright and uh, this one lists for twenty six dollars in the lowest grade of AU which is AU 50 and then an MS 60 which is the lowest grade of uncirculated it's listed at forty four so um I would actually go out on a limb and say this is closer to the value of the MS60 coin. So we'll throw an estimated value on this one out there at about 35 bucks. So I um, guess that would be about the best so far. That 1918D was probably, you know, like I said, in the 30-ish range. So stunning coin there, my favorite one so far too. And uh, keep hunting. Some nice coins still popping out here. That's a 27S and a 25S here. They're both in about the fine range. Um, probably about six bucks a piece on those. And I did pick up another really nice one here. It's a 1928 plain. Nice original toning. Somewhere in the XF range. It's a beautiful coin. Probably closer to 10 on this one. So I'm uh, going to keep looking. Gosh, did I just hit a killer handful here? Sorted them off to the side. Saw that 1920 and 1918 on top of each other. And man, that 1920 is sharp. I'm really hoping that one's going to have a D or an S mint mark on it because it would be worth you know a bit more than the 20 plane. That 1918 could be worth a little bit too. And I looked over in the handful here. And if you see it down there... Looks like another high grade 1928. So uh, let me pull these out and we'll see what we have. Well, that was definitely the best handful so far, but before I show those, these came out of there too. Now, before you get all excited, just to show you the difference between a natural coin and a cleaned one, yes, the details are amazing on this 1945S. You can see the bands catching the light there. But this is, without a shadow of a doubt, a heavily polished coin. That is not natural surfaces. So I just figured I'd show that. Still a beauty though. A lot of detail. Anyway, on the other ones, the 1918 does have a D which is good. In that condition that's about $10. This 1920 is a beauty. It has a tiny nick right there but it's not bad at all. Um, I think that's a little bit shy of XF. That's probably the highest grade of very fine. That's probably VF35 somewhere in there. That's probably about 15. And then the 1928, which is a plain, would also be in the $10 range like the first one. Beautiful coins, so going to keep going. And the 1917S that was in the handful, I forgot to show. 
You see the S on there? That one's probably four to five bucks on that one. Still a nice circulated example. Dang, there's a lot of beautiful 1928s in this batch of coins. It's one of the nicer ones too. Let's see if it has a mint mark. It actually does. It's a 28S. Thought that one was going to be a plane. So uh, let me check the books on this one real quick. See what a 28S and a round XF would be. And uh, well, I'm waiting on that one here. This was a, just an interesting pickup. Somebody did some carving on there. I'm not sure if they stopped halfway through the job or what they were trying to pull off. You can see that right there. And the other side they have a small one. That's an interesting piece. Just check the price guide. The 28S and the lowest grade of XF and XF40 is um, 20 bucks. So that's a good one there. This not quite sure if that's XF40. But if it's not, it's extremely close. So absolute minimum 15 on this one anyway. Sweet score. Gonna keep looking. Golly. This is the highest grade one I've pulled yet. Not a very high value on these, the common ones in the 40s, but man. Beautiful luster on that one. Okay, see what else we can find. Okay, I found a variety coin here, which is a little more scarce, so I figured I'd show it. These sell pretty good in sets. First of all, here's the regular one. I have one to compare it to. This is a 1945 Mercury Dime, the last year. And on the S mint mark 1945, there's a small S and a large S. You can see the mint mark right there. That is a large S variety. Now, I want you to see the other one which is more scarce. I want you to see how small the mint mark is. You can see this is also a 1945. Look how small the mint mark is. It's a really nice um, example of the small S there too. It's stamped up really high as well. So uh, let's try to get them both here at the same time for a comparison if I can. Yeah, you can clearly see the difference there. Alright, let's keep hunting. Trying to keep this short, but the good finds just keep popping up. Right here we got a beautiful 1923. And also a 1916. Beautiful VF Plus coin. Those two are both in the $10 range. And I really like this one here. That is a 1926 D. And I could definitely get some of that tarnish off without destroying the value of the coin. That one's around $20. They're a beauty. I was hoping that one was going to have an S on the back. It'd be closer to $150, but hey, we'll take that. And I just wanted to show this one because I love the toning on this coin. It's like purple and orangish. Orange-ish. It's kind of a hard word to say. You can't really see the purple too well on camera, it just looks more of a gray, but there you go. You can see it kind of at that angle there. Beautifully toned coin. Alright, just a quick wrap up here, and obviously not going to go through each coin. Just up here, most of the good ones I pulled are here. I did get a few more uh, decent ones after my last clip. Um, but those were all put off to the side for various reasons. I didn't show any of the coins I got that were worth a little bit over spot up until about maybe the $5 range. Those are all mixed in here and also down here. I also put it set aside uh, most of the ones that are in almost uncirculated condition. And this bin, this box here, was all the coins that I ended up pulling that are in the XF range. Um, of course, a few VF high-end VF coins would have slid in through there and probably a few borderline almost uncirculated coins um, but yeah I did really well on the high-end coins that was a really good batch 
um, of coins as far as um, the higher grade ones on this batch wasn't the best one as far as getting a good mix of the older dates um, but I did make some amazing pulls so that's good I'm very happy I'm definitely not going to lose money hard to tell how much I'll make um, but yeah these XF coins and ones in that range they always get pulled out because um, they get quite a bit of a premium over spot those will definitely not go in with the, the junk bullion I mean it's called junk bullion I don't think coins are junk but you know the ones that aren't worth over spot all get sold in in bulk lots um, so that's that's my video there to give you guys an idea of what I do for the bullion hot lot hunting um, all the coins with a value of Roughly ten dollars or greater get sold individually, um, and sometimes the you know the seven, eight, nine dollar coins can get sold individually too. Um, the ones that are in the range of just rough estimates, say a mercury dime has a dollar fifty worth of silver in it. So if there's any coins worth more than between like a dollar fifty and like five bucks, those all get sold in lots. You know I'll put them in albums uh, or maybe make sets of them. However. Uh, I decide to do whatever seems like the best idea at the time. And then obviously the ones that are worth spot price or less um, pretty much go into um, you know very large lots just to sell for the silver price. That is unless I do pick, um, like I'm starting lots out here, if there's certain dates I need to fill holes in albums to sell as the sets with the semi-key dates and such, I will definitely pull out the nicer examples. Um, that way they look presentable in the albums because you know I'm just selling them as uh, junk bullion anyway, so basically um, the nicer ones that are mixed in, I'd rather have those in the albums. So it it's just all about coming up with a plan. But um, anyway, that's my video. Uh, I did really well on um, this time through. Didn't find anything, you know, absolute killer. But doing the bullion lot hunting, I've found every single Mercury Dime um, in, in existence except for the 16D and 21D. Um, Last year I even pulled two 1921 key dates. Um, so I don't do this too often because it takes quite a while usually to sell um, the larger lots of bullion. You can't just liquidate them really fast if you're trying to make a little bit of money doing it. So I probably won't do this again for quite a while. But that's just to give you guys an idea what it's like. So uh, thanks for watching and happy treasure hunting. There's thousands of ways out there you can treasure hunt. So keep an open mind and always always be searching and looking out for that next opportunity whether you're digging in the dirt or you know looking the coin roll hunting um, gold prospecting there's just a million ways to treasure hunt and this is one of the ways I do it so uh, take care guys and keep hunting